Girl Talk World with a wonderful Danny Harmon today. Hello! And I was just telling her that she was my absolute idol growing up. I was obsessed. I was the founder of the Speaker Club. I think she's quite impressed with that. <laughs> oh yes, very, very. I'm a bit upset that I didn't get invited into the Beaker Club, but I'll let you off. I'm pretty one. sure, I'm not even lying, I'm pretty sure me and my best friend Faith wrote a letter to the CBBC, to you. Yeah, I don't actually live in the CBBC studio, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, we were about seven, so like that didn't resonate. Oh, but so, <laughs> thank you very much for your letter that I never received. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tracy Beaker is back. How did you feel about her coming back? after, a, well, no, you just told me it started 20 years ago, but we've had a little bit of a gap since the last one, haven't we? Yes, yeah, I think it's been, actually, I don't know how long it's been, probably about 10 years, maybe? Oh, I don't know, it's been very, very long. Anyway, uh, yeah, I was so excited, because I'm just like everyone else, really. I was kind of desperate to know what was going to happen to Tracy next. Like, where's her journey going to take her? Um, so yeah, it was super exciting. I can't wait for everyone to see it, it's gonna be great. I'm excited as well, as you all might be able to tell, I'm fangirling right now. But can you tell <laughs> where you were when you found out this time? Like, how did you react? Did you do a little dance around the room? Were you screaming? Um, where was I? Yeah, I think I was at home actually. But I sort of, I saw the book uh, when that first came out and was like, Hmm, hang on, are we going to make a series of this? Because I feel like we should. Um, so yeah, it was really exciting when they um, decided to go ahead with it. It's been really long in the making though. It's kind of been a, a few years that we've been talking about it. So uh, it's really nice to have finally filmed it and met Emma, who plays my daughter, which was so exciting. Uh, so yeah, I thought I, it's, it's brilliant. The scripts are awesome. How different is Tracy now that she's a mum? I mean, is she more like... Elaine the pain vibe from back in the day, or is she still typical to Tracy? No, she's still very much Tracy Beaker. Um, I don't think she'll ever change, to be honest with you. But I suppose she is more grown up, obviously. You know, I'm in my 30s now, so there is a time where you do just have to grow up. Um, being a mum does change you, because obviously your priorities change. So everything she does now is for her daughter. She's massively protective. Um, but don't worry, she's still got that feisty side. She'll, she'll, she'll still bite your head off if she needs to. <laughs> <laughs> Good. And how, do you remember how you felt when you first realised you got the part as Tracy? So, what, is that 20 years ago now? Do you remember how you felt then? Yeah, I mean, it was so bizarre because um, back then we didn't, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into, to be honest with you. Um, I just knew that it was like 15 minute episodes after school and I just sort of thought, well, no one's going to watch that. Everyone will be getting home and having snacks and changing out. <laughs> Um, but here I am, 31, still talking about it. So it did quite well. Um, so yeah, I kind of wish I knew back then what I knew now. Uh, I think my reaction would have been humongous. <laughs> get spotted everywhere you go still. Is that still a thing? Yeah, that crazy? yeah pretty much, um, which is quite nice, actually. Um, I love meeting people that love the programme. It makes me feel really happy and warm inside. So uh, if you do ever see me, do just uh, give me a wave. Uh, was it always Tracy that you wanted to play or did you like audition for another character or was it always Tracy that you had your eye on? Yeah, I think it was always Tracy that I was up for actually. Um, I know that quite a lot of the other girls sort of auditioned for all the parts. I think I remember reading for Justine at one point, um, but just looking at me, you knew that I was there to play Tracy Beaker. I mean, I already looked like the cartoon. I was basically ready to go. Uh, so yeah, um, no, Tracy for me is just one of my favourite characters I've ever played. Um, you know, she, she can be rude and bossy uh, and shouty. A picnic in the park! Boring. Well, we'll go out to the countryside then. Boring. My back garden? Boring. Tracy. Jackie, I'm dealing with this. Try and be nice, Tracy. Try and not be so useless then! But she's also got the heart of gold. Like, she, you know, she means well. And all she wants to do is be loved, really. That's kind of all that it kind of stemmed from. So yeah, she's such a great character to play. So we did touch on this a bit earlier, but now you're a mum in real life. Have you experienced any Tracy Beaker moments with your daughter? Luckily, she's four, so we haven't got any attitude problems at the moment. But I'm sure it will come. I'm just waiting for the day. Uh, but no, she's absolutely adorable. She's still very much into Peppa Pig and dressing up like a princess, and that is absolutely fine with me. <laughs> Do you think she'll end up watching all the all the Tracy Beakers though? Um, I haven't really thought about it, to be honest. Um, maybe when she's a bit older. Um, but yeah, trying to explain to a four-year-old why mummy's on the TV is going to be slightly tricky. So I think <laughs> I'll be <wait> older. <laughs> and would you say you're, you're a cool mum now? 
Derry. I'm the, I'm the coolest <laughs> mum ever on the whole planet. Um, and I'm sure she'd say the same thing. Uh, no, we, we are both really, really silly. We like dancing, we love singing. So yeah, I, I think I'm cool. I'll probably embarrass her when she's a bit older, but <laughs> for now, she thinks I'm cool. Obviously, Stormzy actually sampled the Tracy Beaker soundtrack for his song, Superheroes. How did you feel about that? Um, well, I won't lie to you. I wasn't sure who Stormzy was, but now I do know, and now I know that it's a very big deal and it's very, very cool. But yeah, I had loads of text messages about it and I was like, what Stormzy? What what band is this? So I had to have a look. Then I realised it wasn't a band. Uh, but yeah, completely flattered. I love the fact that he's um, sort of sampled it and put it in his, uh, his single. I think it's really cool. And it gives me a bit of street cred. I think it makes me cooler. Well, at least you can tell your daughter, actually, if you ever think I'm uncool, Stormzy. Stormzy. That's all I need to say, just that one word. Stormzy. <laughs> uh, we thought it'd be funny, well, a good idea to watch you react as your first Tracy Beaker scene. Sure. <laughs> I do love these opening titles. They make me really happy, they're so cheery. Believe it now, I'll win someday. Right, here we go. Here she is, with my lovely hairdo. If I'm not back in half an hour, I'll call International Rescue. Oh, Connor used to have hair. I forgot he had hair. Tracy, Tracy, wait! Do you not want to hear the Michael Milligan Children's Home welcome speech? Not the way you say it. Your pants. Oh, hang on. Mike, someone's put that stuff in my room. Look, uh, Tracy, you've been gone for three months. We thought you left us for good this time. This is my room. Whoever's in it can pack up that scratching stuff and clear. Sorry, chicken. I can't do that. No! Right, that's quite enough. <laughs> She's quiet, wasn't she? <laughs> I, I watched it yesterday. It brought back so many memories and like the excitement of coming home after school. I was like, quick, the theme tune's on, run! Yeah, I just loved it. I don't remember being that loud. But my goodness, I'm loud. She's so loud and angry. <laughs> But we'd watched it back then to think it was so so long ago. Yeah, it's like watching a completely different person. Um, but what a great entrance and what a great start to a series. Just having some little kids just screaming their head off at some adults. It's oh, wonderful. I was hooked. I think like there wasn't anything where someone was like that boisterous straight away to adults. It was like, I love this. This is yeah. amazing. It was really cool for me because um, kind of growing up, there wasn't many like really strong female characters on the TV, especially in kids' TV. We kind of just sort of had lots of food fights to watch and just silliness. Um, so it was really cool that this came along and um, she was really strong and powerful. Um, she was a little bit naughty, but it, you know, it was because of her background and stuff. It wasn't, she wasn't just naughty for the sake of it. It was kind of more attention seeking. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was it was a really cool part to play. And looking Which, back, wow. who was your favourite like care social worker over the years? Did you have to pick one? Oh, definitely Mike. I mean, he was there from the very beginning um, up until really recently. So uh, yeah, um, he was kind of like the second, well, the only father figure really that Tracy had. Um, so Tracy and Mike's relationship, I love watching kind of over the years, and especially when. Tracy got older and was sort of more of a young adult and just seeing how that relationship changed to kind of father and daughter to sort of friend father daughter kind of thing um so yeah definitely my I, I love that character but uh, my favorite stand-up moment of all like the care workers was when Duke got stuck in the tent because of the ants got let loose can you remember oh. No, I haven't got a clue what you're talking about, but now I'm going to go on YouTube and have a little look for that. Well, there was one, and that was like, you were all camping in the garden, but he could only camp in the garden if like one of the care workers went as well with the kids, but then someone had yeah. their ants, and the ants got let loose, and I think they got stuck. Right. Duke was 
stuck in the tent and like, literally we will still play that me and my friends sometimes and just and just laugh i oh, really <laughs> okay find it now go, go watch it what would you say is your favorite part of the whole like trace speaker timeline oh gosh um all of it can i say all of it i'm gonna say all of it all of it all of it was great. I loved the beginning because that's where it all started. I loved bringing Tracy back um, as a you know a young adult when she was a care worker, um, and then I've loved bringing her back as a mum. So I think all of it really works, and then um, you get to see Tracy grow and evolve over the years, which is great. And how long do you reckon this will go on for? Like, is there any scope for like my, Tracy Speaker, my grand, my grand Tracy Speaker? Do you think that's going to happen? Who? I don't, Who? I don't, Knows. <laughs> I'll never say never. I'll probably still be playing this character well into my 80s. I'd be okay with that. That's fine. <laughs> so thanks for, so much for watching, everyone. And thanks, Danny, for joining me. Everyone go check out the new Tracy Beaker series, My Mum, Tracy Beaker. Any last words, Danny, before we go? Yes. Thank you for having me.